So we're in South Texas and we're going to be rattling whitetails and I'm going to be lucky enough to rattle with the wizard of whitetail rattling, Wade Middleton. This isn't the first time Tony has had an up-close view at how enthralling rattling for whitetail can be. Let's take a look back at some of his past experience rattling down here in South Texas. The only place I've ever rattled was here in Texas. Typically, we're hunting out of stands and I'd rather not do that and that's why I come down here and wait every year. So we're here the first week of December every year doing this for I think the last four years now. So probably the first time I, I rattled with Wade, we're out in the field, he's rattling and I'm looking around, I don't see nothing. I'm, I'm thinking to myself, is this really gonna bring deer in or is it gonna scare him away? And sure enough, we had a spike horn come in, we had a couple of four pointers come in and that was the first time we sat for a rattle. He no sooner cracks the horns together, a nice 10 pointer comes in, straight on facing us and it's like, he says, shoot it now. You don't have a lot of time, so shot him straight on. Uh, he maybe went 30 yards, fell over, and uh, that was the end of the first rattling hunt that year. Biggest thing with the rattling is there's nothing there, and then they just magically appear. And you don't even hear them coming in. You'll just look, and it's there, and it's like split second. You got to make a decision. You're going to shoot the deer. You're not going to shoot the deer because it's not going to hang around and wait forever. You know, for somebody that never rattled before, they've deer hunted, they've done it out of blinds or out of stands, there's no comparison. I'd rather do this more than anything. It's, you're busy all the time. Like I said, you set up for about 20 minutes, you rattle, you get some deer coming in. There's always something going on. You always see some type of game and just a lot more fun than sitting in a blind waiting for something to show up. Well, during the hunt today, Tony will be using the Performance Center 629 44 Magnum Hunter. Let's hear his thoughts on handgun hunting and how his passion for utilizing them has evolved over the years. If anybody's ever saw some of the shows I've been on before, they've heard me talk about the Performance Center 629 Hunter. It by and large is my favorite gun to go deer hunting with. Gets the job done, they don't go too far. And if you've hunted with a rifle, you hunted with a bow, you know, you might want to think about trying handgun hunting. It's, it's really fun. I've taken handgun hunting, you know, 15, 20 years ago. And once I started, that was it. That's all I do. You know, Smith & Wesson probably makes, in my opinion, the best handguns on the market today and the Performance Center, what they do is they make that gun that much better. So we put integral rails on it, we do action jobs, so your, your trigger's a lot lighter, a lot smoother. You don't have to worry about your mount coming loose because it's integral to the barrel. We put compensators on, so less muzzle flip. So you get that follow-up shot on the animal if you have to take it that much quicker. You know, to find out more about Performance Center products, you just have to go to Smith & Wesson's website, click on the area that says Performance Center, you'll see all the different products we offer. We offer, you know, concealed carry guns, hunting handguns, as well as rifles. Just a plethora of opportunity there to pick from. From hand cutting and fine tuning for precision, Performance Center guarantees top performance from its firearms and promises to deliver your best shot yet. Well, coming up, we're getting right to the action and joining Tony and Wade as they set out on a rattling mission to draw in a Texas whitetail. As we head to the break, let's take a listen to some handgun hunting tips from Wade. You know, I routinely get a lot of questions when I'm out and about about, you know, taking up new means and methods to go hunt with, uh, you know, hunting in different locations, different species. And one of those popular questions I tend to get recently is handgun hunting. The people come up and say, man, I saw you hunting with that 460 or you were rattling and you rattled in this big deer and the guy shot it with a handgun. And they're like, I want to learn how to do that. I'm interested in that. And the first thing I always tell them is don't be afraid to take up handgun hunting. Yes, it's totally different than hunting with a rifle or a muzzleloader or any other means and method that you've ever hunted with before, but it's so much fun. It opens up an entirely new way for you to be able to go hunting. The second thing I tell them is make sure and spend some time studying the locations that you're going to be hunting and understanding what calibers are probably going to be the best for that situation. You might not necessarily need to go grab the 460 or the 500s and be able to go out for some big game. You might only be hunting whitetail and tight end quarters and there may be another caliber or another frame that'll be perfect for you. So the bottom line when it comes to taking up handgun hunting is don't be afraid to try it. Spend some time learning and understanding all the different calibers and the sizes of revolvers out there and what each one of them would go do and then get out and enjoy it because I promise you once you start taking up handgun hunting you're gonna have another means and method that's gonna open up a lot of doors and opportunities for you to find success in the field. Welcome back to Americana Outdoors. We're joining Tony on the second morning of his South Texas visit. 
So we're, we're down in South Texas. We're gonna do a little rattling today. Uh, we rattled last night a little bit, saw a few deer. We're hoping this morning it's a little bit cooler. We're hoping to get a little bit more action with the bucks chasing the does. The deer really weren't moving around. Uh, it's a little bit cooler this morning, so we're hoping they're gonna move around a lot better. So hopefully we get it done this morning. We go to this first spot, we set up on it, and he says, you know, I really wanna try this area. I know there's a lot of deer in it. He says, I think this will be a good opportunity to do some rattling. He starts rattling and uh, I don't think we were there probably 10 minutes. We've got does all over the place. We've got bucks coming in from behind us. And for whatever reason, our scent doesn't seem to bother them. They're just all over us. When you have these animals pop out in front of you and you got your gun up and they take off on just like that. You, you can be frustrated, but if you just stick with it, it's gonna happen. And there's plenty of animals here. I don't get disappointed not being able to shoot, but sometimes there's a real nice one you'd really like to get the shot at, and it just doesn't happen. Well, we got in this morning, we got set up here. Uh, weight started rattling, rattling a pretty good size one behind us. I couldn't turn around and take a shot at it, but it took off. Uh, a couple minutes later, he rattled again brought another buck in. I was about two ounces away from dropping a hammer on that thing and it took off. You don't get a lot of time. It's a really quick uh, encounter and off you went. After just missing out on taking that buck, Wade and Tony decide to move to a new location and stick with this tactic of moving around to maximize their chances of stirring up some deer movement. And so they moved and moved and moved again, until finally settling into an area they hunted last year with some promising opportunity. So we went in, we set up, he starts rattling, two doe come out into the field. We didn't seem to bother them after a while. They settled down, they're walking around in there, and uh, in comes the first buck. He comes in and he's, he's coming in from the left and he's kind of following those does. I tried to bring the gun up, but he just, he was behind a bunch of bush and he never really actually came in and he went off to the left with those does. Looked back, here comes another buck. Yeah, he's behind it for me too. Kind of an old timer. Not the best rack in the world, but it'll do. You know, this rattling is kind of tough, so it's one of those things. You've got nothing in front of you. You crack the horns a couple of times. The next thing you know, you got a couple of does, and then we got these two bucks come in. It just goes from nothing to high intensity, just like that. That's a Smith Wesson Performance Center 629. It's 44 Magnum. One shot, down he went, you know? Nothing like it. Hey, congrats, Tony, on harvesting this great management buck. For more information on Performance Center handguns, visit smith-wesson.com and click Performance Center. Before we wrap up the show, Wade has one more handgun hunting tip for us. You know, something that I like to really think about and practice in my hunting world is mimicking or thinking about exact hunting situations and how it may go down. If I know what stand I'm hunting or a blind, I'm playing it in my mind, sometimes weeks and months in advance of what may happen. You know, this could be the scenario, I think the deer's gonna come from my left, he's gonna come in and he's gonna water here or feed here or maybe work a scrape through here. How am I going to be situated to take that shot? 
Am I going to be shooting off of a tripod? Am I going to be leaning up against a tree? Am I going to have a good solid rest? Or may I be even shooting freehand? In any of those situations, I want to spend time practicing for that. Uh, whether I'm on the range, sitting in a chair, sitting down on the ground, whether I'm off of a bench, whether I might even be shooting at freehand, because the more time I spend practicing and preparing for the exact situations I may encounter in the field, the better I'm gonna be prepared for that moment of truth when I get that opportunity to harvest the buck of a lifetime, or maybe it's just a doe for the freezer.